What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, She-Hulk, man. Again, you know me. Wait to see all some new rock stars. <laughs> so you're, you're sticking to your word. You're not even watching it anymore. You're just doing I, recaps. I do the, I think, what this is what I do. I do the recap first, and then I watch it. <laughs> just so I can see what they are seeing what they're seeing or whatever but i'm just not interested I, don't get me wrong brian i when i do watch the show there's some humorous humorous things that are happening with the characters and how they do things or whatever the case may be but overall brian again i'm not interested in this show um, what did you think uh, yeah i think yeah, look, I appreciate we appreciate everyone who tuned in for, for the last the last show we did on this show. Um, I think episodes four and five definitely were a little different. Um, maybe exposed some other issues with the underlying show, so maybe the non MCU manufactured show. Um, but I think you're kind of left with some of the same core issues and i think you're right as we're getting deeper into this um you know we're getting a better feel for for what's going on here so you know let's kind of break it down so four and five the number one thing is fewer cameos right we, we reduced the reliance on that so maybe maybe we saw for the better part of two episodes something closer to what the show's creators submitted uh and i think in some ways, it was probably less offensive because you didn't have as many cameos and many thing, as many things to ruin or cheapen. Yeah. But it also made it even more harmless to me when you were watching it. And I think one of the questions I'm reading a lot online that I, I wanted to start with was, I've seen a lot of people, even people who, who like the show a lot more than, than I do or you do, saying, but where is this going? Like we're five episodes in and like, we don't know who the big bad is. We don't know what this building towards. I just want to put out there the idea that this show is not going anywhere and it's not designed to go anywhere. Like if you think about if this show truly is inspired by sitcom, by shows like Ally McBeal, by shows that were on in the nineties, those shows don't go anywhere. Like, those are, sing for the most part, single episode shows that you tune into week in, week out, just to check in with your characters and see what kind of shenanigans they, they're up to. Seinfeld doesn't go anywhere. Friends doesn't go anywhere. And these are Pantheon shows we're talking about. I ain't saying She-Hulk is like that. I'm just pointing out that comedies many times, and, into, and, and honestly, adventures like Star Trek Next Generation, that was a single episode series, except for the finales and the premieres. I don't think this show's going anywhere. I think episode four and five was an indication of we just want to take She-Hulk, put her in some situations, some of which are in the courtroom, some of which are a little more Avenger-ish, and we're just going to do that for 30 minutes a pop once a week. That's it. I don't think this show's going anywhere. I don't think there is like a grand storyline that leads to some huge meaningful showdown the way we got like loki and can i don't think so i think people need to get off that maybe i'll be totally wrong and by the way if i am totally wrong that's another strike against this show because then how do you justify getting five episodes into a nine episode season and really not going anywhere when you plan to go somewhere by the end so yeah. either way i think it's i think it's another l because it just underscores how irrelevant the show is. Now, I have decided, like, as I keep watching, I think Tatiana Maslany is good. I think she's a good casting choice. I really like when she is Jennifer Walters. I enjoy watching her. She's I like she's the other good. characters, too. So this is about to get to that. She, she's got this talent for, she is able to move her face in a way that she kind of is able to let you know what she's thinking or doing without actually like saying anything. She's very good at that. I don't know how she does that. It's very cool. Yeah. 
And she has good chemistry with the co-stars when she's Jen. Yeah. And so, you know, and there's some, there's some layered stuff there, like the, the superpower lawyer who helps her uh, in the copyright case is based on a Marvel character, but then they cast one of the lawyers from The Good Wife. So they actually took someone who had played like a high profile attorney in another pretty high profile show, threw her into this. And I think that was not an accident. They were trying to get you to kind of look in that direction yeah. a little bit. So they all do a decent job in these small roles. Um, I do have to give a shout out. I'm completely biased, but um, episode four, Donnie Blaze, no relation to Johnny Blaze. Uh, <laughs> Donnie Blaze played by Reese Coiro, who actually was a friend of mine from high school. We were in the same class, same school. We grew up together. Uh, diehard Knicks fans together. Used to get together, watch games. Uh, we did high school musicals. He was, I mean, he's the guy from my high school class that you, if anyone was going to make it in any sort of way in Hollywood, he was that guy. Okay. Every show, whether he was a supporting or the lead, ultimately, when he was a junior or senior, he had it. And everybody in the auditorium responded to him. And so what I found funny for me personally was the character he's playing in the She-Hulk show actually reminds me a lot of the way Reese kind of was in high school. Like that, I don't know what it is, that MC, like I've got control of the audience and I'm kind of like messing around, but everything's tongue in cheek. It was just bringing back a lot of personal memories for me. So yeah. I got to give him a shout out. I'm completely biased. And yes, his wife directs some of the episodes of the show, but which I've been killing. But it was really cool to see him. And uh, and, and if you guys recognize him, he's, he was in Entourage. He was in 24. Like, he's definitely been in some stuff that you've probably seen. Oh, wait, 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 wait. He's Billy Walsh from Entourage. And he was, an, he was like a mole agent in one of the seasons of 24 trying to take down Kiefer Sutherland. So, and he was in what episode of, of She-Hulk? She was in like the third? Or fourth. 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 He's, Don, he's Donnie Blaze. He's the fraudulent yeah, 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 escaped yeah, yeah, guy yeah, from yeah, Comertage yeah. who's t stealing, you know, the using the, the sling ring. Oh, snap. I didn't know you, you knew him. Yeah. No, that's so dope. We, that's yeah, dope. no, it's cool. Because like I said, like we, we would get together at each other's houses and watch Knicks games in the, in the 90s when the Knicks are actually good. And yeah, no, it was... <laughs> Yeah, it was cool. Anyway, so to see him do that, I can't I can't say a bad word just because just because of our, our history there, but that was that was fun for me. But but like I said, the characters is not the problem. No, I agree. Uh it's just again, where is this going? The CGI for me for She Hulk is just a big eyesore. It just doesn't work. It yeah, just doesn't know. work. The weird thing about that, I'm curious if I'm the only one noticing this. Are you noticing that the CGI She-Hulk looks different week to week? Like, like it's it, almost improving? <laughs> or like it's changing. Like it, so there's, there, if you look at the credits, there's a lot of effects houses who are in this show. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if like there's a different effects house doing like episode two versus episode four. Because there's something about like the texture and the movement in episode five that looks different than the one in episode one. And I'm like, am I, am I, I went back and rewatched it. I'm like, no, nah, there's something. Let's say the CGI was fantastic. Does the show still work? No. I'd be interested, but the story and where this is going, the, this is supposed to be a comedy. I just don't think the comedic aspect was, was, was uh, successful. Even if the CGI was great, this show is not going to be saved. Episode five to me was, I texted you that it was unwatchable, but I got it. I got what they were doing. So it's a court case where she's up against Titania for the yeah. trademark. Mm -hmm. This is a very like meta episode because She-Hulk's entire origin is about a copyright. This goes back, Stan Lee created Savage She-Hulk because they were worried the TV network was going to spin off the Bill Bixby show into a She-Hulk show, which they had done with um, a Six Million Dollar Man had become the Bionic Woman a few years earlier. So they raced to write this character so they could trademark it before TV stole it. So I got it. I, I think that's 
what episode five was supposed to be. It's like, ha ha, we're doing this like within the show. I don't think it worked because I just, there's no drama, there's no intensity. And even though, yes, the self-deprecating nature of trotting out all her Tinder dates to say that she is in fact She-Hulk, it, it just, it's just a lame payoff. Like it doesn't make you laugh, doesn't make you cry, doesn't make you that excited. What it does is kind of make me stare at Titania and say, okay, you're supposed to be her arch nemesis. Is this the extent of your conflict is you guys are going to battle in the legal system? Because if it is, why do we care? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Titania is almost like Mumra is to the Thundercats. He's the <laughs> dude that's going to be around. <laughs> As a villain, they they're gonna be going back and forth. It's like, yeah, yeah. And it was weird because they started them out with a sort of a dramatic crash through the wall. She hits her with a punch, and you're like, okay, that's pretty classic. Maybe, we're, and like, we're not we're not doing that. Like, I don't, I'm just, I don't get it. Like, that's you know, and then. And then, and this is the part. So for these two episodes, I was kind of more, it's funny, you just yawn. I was kind of more bored than <laughs> incensed. But then they got me, they got my blood boiling again at the end of this episode. Because the other subplot to episode five is the, she needs a costume, she needs clothes. So they take her to Luke Jacobson, the superhero costume designer. And here's where I get angry, like Hulk angry, because the implication is that this guy is like, he's the go-to for heroes on the down low, that he is making suits and gadgets across the MCU. Because you see like body, body types, you see somebody's walking out with a costume and then you see matt murdoch's costume in the box at the end spoiler alert he and reminds you it, yeah. he reminds you of edna from in the incredibles which that part was great because that was original for that family at the yeah. time she's yeah. fantastic yeah but she's not making you know, she's not making Tony Stark suits. She's not making cap suits. Like, that's my problem with it. I have no problem with the idea that this a character like this could exist for a pocket of no name alter egos, a local guy, a local guy. Yeah. But the whole setup here is he basically is like, why should I make a costume for She Hulk? She's not an Avenger. I only make costumes for Avengers. And then with Daredevil, it really ticked me off because, you know, Melvin Potter. Gladiator from the Daredevil is the guy is the guy who because he makes Kingpin's costume first and then he makes Daredevil. That's a whole part of that storyline and conflict. And you're telling me that now Matt Murdock basically goes to this guy for and I'm like, this ain't Project One Way, man. Like I I've seen Tim Gunn. I like Tim Gunn. I don't need it. I don't need it in the MCU. Brian, I had texted you what my idea of what this episode would be and would have probably worked if they thought of it this way. So apparently the scene with Daredevil and She-Hulk is on a rooftop and they talk about something, whatever. And for some reason, I don't know, he has this yellow and red outfit. My theory and thought about this scene would have worked if she was telling the story of this guy and in her story the way she was uh, telling it he looked like that but that wasn't his real suit so to speak right because there's a there's a um I'm telling you, there was the man. There's some tent. There's some, you, you know, no. tension there in that in that in that in that scene in, that we're gonna see, and so, um, you know, man woman tension. And 
that could have been her story telling her to a friend and we could have visualized it that way and the yellow suit doesn't really exist that would have been a good way to pay it off and 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 not have to deal with this yellow suit coming out of nowhere that he wears now and why doesn't he wear it in born again i don't know i don't understand it so i completely agree the teaser for the rest of the season or episode six clearly at least points yours it's, it's if it's a misdirect we'll see but it's pointing you in the direction that there is a sexual tension between these two characters that they if they're not setting them up to be a couple they're definitely setting it up to be kind of the ships passing in the night who definitely have a little bit of a connection which look i mean as we know matt murdoch gets around like that's not exactly foreign to his his character's dna there's a way that can work right because they're both lawyers they both have alter egos one is hidden one is not there is a way to make that work and it, and you could if i trusted things more right now you could use a very you know matt murdoch from a much darker underbelly of the criminal world as a way to basically indoctrinate She-Hulk into what it's really like, like to be a hero. It's like, up until now, you've seen the lighter side because you've been in the courtroom. You've had a couple of a couple of thugs try to mug you on your way home, whatever. And he kind of shows her, now this is how it really is. This is where the law ends and you start. And you could use that to make Tatiana Maslany's character a little more serious, right? She's like, I didn't know that was out there. I wasn't taking this seriously enough. But this show is not the show to do that. This show is absolutely going to pull him the mm -hmm. other way. So I'm just hoping it's not so far that we're just like angry going into Echo and going into his own show. I just don't understand the yellow suit. I can see that scene playing out the way it, it does. Him being cool about how he delivers his line and not look like a uh, like look silly, right? Because I think we've read Brian some of the the dialogue that's going to happen in that scene, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound crazy. And I don't think no. Charlie Cox is looking for something goofy, so he's going to be himself, and she, and and Jennifer Walters is going to be Jennifer Walters, and we're going to see how that dynamic works. But the yellow suit, Brian, is what I don't understand. And like I said, now the genesis of that is coming from this other designer, which is not, in my mind, true to the Daredevil comic, hist uh, comic history about his costume. And now I'm just angry, right? So we're going into this episode. We're going to get Matt Murdock. And I'm already just like, not with it. So that's continues with this show. This show getting access to these characters, being able to make choices, and those choices are having ramifications where I feel like these characters and other shows are gonna have to undo some of this to get us back on track. And that's not what you want. It's not what you want yeah, in yeah, these shows. Yeah. Yo, let's know in the conversation below what you guys think about what's going on with the She-Hulk, the show. Are you uh, enjoying it? Do you find it humorous? I find it humorous, but I don't find it like a comedy, like funny, funny, like um, Shit's Creek. I discovered that after all the Emmys that were winning and I was like, let me watch this show. And I was like, yo, this is really hilarious. Yeah. You know, and and uh, Perfect Strangers, that was hilarious. Brian, I think I like the show because he's in it. When I saw him, I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> Because <laughs> I haven't seen him some perfect strange. I think he's been in some in some other things, but he's always like good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this show doesn't just it just doesn't do it for me. So um, let's see. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens after this is over, Brian. Will they announce another season of this? Oh God! I hope given so. given given this reaction, Brian. Given the reaction of two MCU fans talking to you, and there are many of you out there who probably don't like the show either. But here we are. You have to ask yourself, if is Kevin Feige a genius? This is his plan. I was thinking about this because this, this he couldn't have said, this is fantastic. Let's put it. I think his plan is to 
get everybody talking uh, smack about the MCU so he can come out with Wakanda forever and everybody's praising MCU again. I think he's that's what he's doing. That emotional ride. Because no way he's sitting in his room and watching this thing and this is amazing. No, I and I, like I said, if you're going to do this as a week to week single episode show, I don't believe there's an. I mean, if this is your season one in terms of what the writers came up with for the situations for her to be in, are you telling me that you can you can do this for fifty episodes over five like five seasons? There's no way. Like, like we, we kind of have like okay the origin. We have, yeah. you know, she joins the she loses her job and gets a new one. We have the dating right and and like to be clear, you have not heard either of us talk about the whole gender underpinning to this show right a lot of this show is the ally you know there's a, the allegory of the challenges of being a woman in modern society there's a lot of that in this show you've not heard either of us comment on that at all as a reason why we like or don't like things in this show but i'm simply asking if this is what you came up with to out of the gate hook people i don't see how you could consistently write 40 more episodes of this or 20 more episodes of this and come up with more compelling things to get more people hooked. And to my mind, if you're Disney, that's why you would renew this show is if you believe that that's the case. If it's more of the same, or if you think this is their best shot, there's absolutely no justification for this show to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the conversation below. She Hulk. Four more episodes left, Brian? Mercifully, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs>